Welcome to Zanantanich. When I lived in Belize in the 1970s, I lived across the river from Zanantanich. And I had a Maya friend. We used to take his canoe across the river and make our way up to the Castillo with machetes to sleep atop the pyramid on full moons. It's where the Maya mystique first took hold of me. So, let's now view excavations during the 2022 20, field season at Zanantanich. We've got a middle pre-classic structures around Ball Court 2 and Plaza A1, a Plaza B sweat bath, structures A9 panels 3 and 4, and structure A9 tomb of a female and movement of the panels from Caracol. And we thank Dr. Jaime Awe for allowing us to videotape. Take it away. And to help orientate you, here's a site map of Zanantanich from LeCount and Jaeger, 2010. And I want to point out the Castillo, the largest pyramid at Zanantanich. And we'll be using this detail to point out the different structures. So now let's begin with excavations of uh, middle pre-classic structures around the end of Ball Court 2. And it's located right here in Plaza A. I think they were like 30 some. But in, in total there were about 90 mm. uh, eccentrics mm -hmm. in the caches. Um, and when we put in our unit, um, one of those units right here, we hit the edge of what was a platform. So I decided that a project for one of my other grad students is still, and he just went that way. So no one's really talked much about the pre classic and the side core. Yeah. And I thought, hey, that would be a great master's thesis. Yeah. So I said to Esteban, you know, he's, you know, that's why we're putting the unit over there. I had put one when I did the tourism project at the center line of the Castillo. Right. And it had gone down. And I had found a couple of shirts that were Cunil and Savannah Orange, da da da, etc. And we had also placed a unit uh, in the plaza there. And we found a little platform that's a little pre classic. So I had little bits and pieces. And when we were doing that unit, we found a middle preclassic figurine. This summer now, we said, let's put some units, different locations, to see if we can find this middle preclassic building. And as you can see, you come over this way, where you can see what this came up there. It turns here. Some big blocks. Yes. Now it goes under the ball court. We might put a unit up on the bench there. Then we don't have to destroy it. Do you have the, another corner of it? Well, we're going to dig behind Jim. We'll follow it. We're hoping it's going to curve right by where Jim, uh, the other Jim is. <laughs> yeah. These blocks remind me of what you guys were doing in Plaza B at Cal Pepsi. Or right on. A couple years ago. Totally. Yeah. Totally. It's in that style. And then we found, uh, Brick was excavating here, helping us there, and then we found two other figurines. Uh, beautiful, you know, the typical pre-classic figurine head, and one of the bird ocarinas that came out here. And that looks like it's um, either modified bedrock, the, the floor is a little higher, you see the wall doesn't go all the way to bedrock. I know what you're saying. And, um, and tons, again, of savanna orange, of the brown, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, types of materials that are coming out. Jill, do you see the see the wall over here? No, I, got over there I mean, they're literally, they're all exact copies. Yeah. We yeah. can't get two blocks the same size, shape, yeah. length, width, or thickness yeah. at all. It'd be interesting to figure out where they were. Uh, these guys are right on the limestone hill. Yeah, what, where they're grinding this stuff yeah. out. Gee, it's so it's good. a big yeah. platform, you know. Um, yeah. Not very complex, you know. <laughs> pretty simple. Oh, oh, it's big oh, oh yeah. Do you guys have any any um, plaster? Have you seen any? There were one floor or yes, we had a floor when Rick was here um, excavating. Uh, and Dan, um, the floor is like right here, Terry. You can still see oh, some yeah. of it there. It came right from the bottom there. I think it's right there too. We figured that the earliest plaster floor we have at Pac Between is about 600. Yeah. Anything before that is is marl. Did you guys find some charcoal down here? I think you had like little tags, remember? <coughs> I don't think we found any near yeah. the bottom. Yeah. No. None here? I don't think we found them. But you got you got some from just below the floor. Yeah. And from by the wall. 
So, and then, so that's inside. And again, we're going to try to see what's, you know. I think we got plaster over there too. Um, yeah. the Cruelly preserved, but uh, hey, you know. Man, I just can't get over the size, the size of the box, the quality of it. Yeah. That's pretty unique. Yeah. Yeah. So one of our last units from the last, the, not the end cash, but the cash here. That's our back there. Yeah. And um, that's with the terminal from 2018 when we excavated them, we found the cash. The cash was just above the. Mm. That uh, free classic mm. platform, mm -hmm. and so we're trying to get a you know a hand on what the pre classic uh, architecture is here. Well, I'm glad you're getting more of it. <clears throat> and, and like I said, you know, um, no one's really talked about the pre classic at the site core of yeah. Yeah. So it'll be interesting how it how it ties um, in with what Cat's, Cat's doing. doing. Yeah. yeah, I thought Cat what Cat was doing was built before downtown's in Nottingham. Well, that's what, that, that, that was prior to any major testing up here. Oh yeah? So now that we're doing this research, it will allow us then to get a better sense of, you know, how the site evolves. You gonna present on this at the... This Not part? this year. Yeah. No, because I want, you know, Esteban's gonna write it up for his MA thesis. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So maybe next, next year. year. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a cool. You know, it's, and it's good size. Mm -hmm. So, is <laughs> it in the tomb of the Caltech? Oh, Capitun! <laughs> See the slave slabs? Yeah. This is 1987. Oh, I've got this. I've got this picture too. Young punk Jim. <laughs> <laughs> That's on B3 or B2. Yeah, B2. Look at B2. Look at all the slate in there. The southern. Yep. Of, mm -hmm. of the of the E group. Mm -hmm. We tested structure ten. We didn't do the conservation, obviously. Um, and then Doug inside and found a couple of burials, and he found lots of ceramic deposits. When the Shenantanich project came, they, they, they dug a couple of units in the courtyard. Who, who did that? Do you know? They never wrote it up. Oh. Okay. Yeah, there's still some stuff that we find that were never, you know, and, um, in, in their progress reports. But So we decided to come back here in 2016, I think it's 2016, 2017. And all the inside those rooms, just tons of deposits, like all kinds of stuff, ceramics. Um, over there, a complete turtle shell with uh, perforations, so like a turtle mm -hmm. shell drum. Uh, figurines, uh, bifaces, faces I mean, you name it, jade, uh, human bones. We also found several barrels of children right in front of the Eastern Shrine there. <laughs> um, animal remains, little bits of everything. And so we decided to then expand. We found a big cache right on, you know, where the rope is, mm -hmm. the, right in front of there. We found this cache of smashed Belize red vessels. And then we, you know, we've added to the map because we've now seen some structures that weren't in the original. That's normal, you know, when things are covered in dirt, you, you'll miss some buildings. And, um, and so we've been excavating here. This is modified bedrock right there. Mm -hmm. You can see modified bedrock of drain. Right in here. Ew. And there is just, you'll see right now, so much artifacts. In fact, we think that when the site is uh, abandoned, people are coming back and doing these rituals. Uh, you know, this is sacred landscape. This is where the ancestors live. We've done like micro stratigraphy where you see some dirt above the final floor and then you start to see artifacts. Well, there's some other really interesting bits that we just learned last week or within the last couple of weeks of this group. Um, every time the, the rangers clear, if you come here, you'll see it. The, the artifacts are popping out of the walls. <laughs> so the rangers just, like, look, look there. Right? It's just all over. So the rangers just pile them here for me to look oh, at. Crap. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, you can see modified bedrock here, like a green. And, um, well, I don't see that. 
it's really nice little drain that they dug. But um, <clears throat> we pulled, like just where they are right now, about 12, 15 bags of pottery every day. <gasps> Look at the soil. <laughs> like, see, we're following this wall right now. Just this morning, look at all the bags of pottery from just this morning. All this stuff. Um, and here you can see, Terry, look, look at this. Um, big, whoo, nice. This is either Kai or is it? Oh, no, no, it's got the, yeah, the, um, uh, no, I thought it had the pipe and I'm crossed. But um, it's just everywhere. You know, bags and bags of pottery. Now, over here, we have a sweat bath. Oh, now, this sweat out? bath, yeah, if you come this way, I'll show you something that really true. us. We have one that's baking pot, we have one that's still. So they're not, they're not rounded then? What? Oh, on side, no. But what should they do? Okay? You remember it, Tony. Where are you? Hey. It's here. Guys, uh, Dr. Terry Powers, who works at and some of members of his crew. Mm -hmm. The only members of our crew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Except for him, poor man. And <laughs> what's the show back in here? Skaggs. Dr. Skaggs in the back there who works in New York City. I forgot which one of the colleges. Uh, Bronx Community College. All right. And are you at? I am Dr. King. Dr. King from University of South Carolina. South USC. And the real boss. <laughs> I'm just the oldest person in the crew. Right? <laughs> I'm the fog. <laughs> Never a friggin' old guy. <laughs> so, Jim, if you come out here, check and see how they're changing their architecture over time. The original sweat bath. Yeah, if you guys come over here, you'll, you'll see it better. This is a pendant later on. I think it's easier to go that way. That's, there is the original building, right? Give it here. We thought this was going to be just, you know, like the, right behind you or to the south. We thought this was going to be one big, long platform yeah. right on the wall that I'm standing on. Well, yeah. that was not the case. Because when we dug in there, we found this wall. And you notice this abuts that wall. Mm -hmm. So it means this came after yeah. this, right? Yeah. And you came in, and you notice something here? Look at the base. What is it doing? Turn the curve. Yeah. Marking up. It's vaulting, yeah. right? Vaulting. It's the vault springs right there. Yeah. So it's a little vaulted entrance. Oh, I see. So, that's the... so, and yeah. sweat baths, like I said, we dug one at Books Hill, at Baking Pots, really well preserved at Baking Pots. Oh, we yeah. conserved it too at Baking Pot. Yeah. And um, you, you have to duck into it because you want to keep the heat in. Yeah. And then you come in, there's always benches on both sides. If you look at El Seren, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Sheets did uh, really good. Peso? Yeah. So then step up. There's another step that wasn't too well preserved. And this is the fire pit. Yeah. It's burnt, see the burning? Yeah. So just last week, right, the guys had cleared this up. And I'm here, and I look over there, and I go, that was the fire pit. that's burnt too. They don't have two fire pits. So then I'm in here, and I look this, and look at this, how nice, this beautiful plastered wall. Mm -hmm. And it goes right underneath this. And it also is over here. That used to be the bloody entrance. And if you look too, look what it's yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. vaulting yeah. right here and then cap. Mm -hmm. So what they do is this northern section used to be the original entrance. And then later they block it off. And then they put the entrance mm -hmm. here. So that was the original fireplace. Mm -hmm. But what's also really crazy now, well, before we go there, uh, we also found that over here, that's the end wall of the sweat bath. And this is not, this was the other building that's contemporaneous, right here, it's going there. Looters in the 70s that destroyed this. And Liz and David, 
did a salvage. It's published in Archaeology magazine. Oh, yeah. It's called Fighting a Looting Battle. <laughs> that's a David. That's a yes, David very David title. <laughs> so that was there. So later on, and so there used to be an alleyway. And later they blocked the alley. But before they blocked this alleyway, there were deposits down below. And if you come over here, you will see the kinds of stuff we're finding. Look at the mono there. Look at all the artifacts. It stops about here, right? And then, there's a nice piece of obsidian. Mm -hmm. There's a uh, spindle whorl. There is either human remains or animal mm -hmm. remains. Um, there's all kinds of stuff coming out of here. Um, really dense deposits. Oh, they also found right here some uh, bifaces. It's probably in one of the bags in there. Mm -hmm. And um, it's uh, associated with some of those deposits. So it's almost like they're reoccupying this area after abandonment and after they've been doing these deposits because they're constructing above the deposits. Well, it even gets better to see that. If we come back to the over here to the uh, you can really see the vault here of this. See? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then right there, it's vaulting. You can jump over here. Yeah. And right here. See right there, it's going to vault and then cap. Well, this is what's interesting. See this wall here? Mm -hmm. We're finding deposits down there. Look, this I call it the floating wall. We're finding all this stuff, all that ceramic is coming out of here. Wow. And then they build this wall over it. Mm -hmm. And they are making this long bench where you, you, we've gone through the floor of the bench. Can you see the back wall of that building? And the front wall of that building is behind Terry, underneath that tree. So they're building these walls above deposits. Instead of clearing it and put it, usually walls start on floors, not there. And we found another example of that right here. This is the end of the sweat bath right there. Right. Right. But then they add this just like they added where, right, those guys where Sheldon is. They add this wall here, and look again, it's floating above the bloody deposits. Hmm. So either somebody's coming in after people or by doing these kinds of deposits here and then build on top of it. It's weird, I've never seen that. So group B has turned out to be really interesting for understanding these kinds of, we, we refer to them as peri-abandonment deposits and peri-abandonment activities. Really, really crazy, but interesting. And we're, you know, part of this, part of my project is to further develop the site for tourism. And Group B is allowing us to move traffic. You know, everyone that comes, they want to run up to the Castillo and then they leave. <laughs> but at least people that are more interested, right, in having like the sweat bath and, you know, we're hoping that it will draw folks out here. And the tour guys bring out people here when they know we're here. Yeah. Can you tell us about the graffiti room with Kat? So up in the Castillo, yeah. uh, Kat has found a whole bunch of graffiti. Now, we have different of opinion about what, you know, how it operated. Um, you know, Leah, who was there with her, uh, they argued that it could have been a scribal training room. But, you know, I, at one of the symposiums, I said, well, don't you think they'd run out of space quickly? <laughs> yeah. right? And then what did they do? Oh, well, maybe they plastered it over. I said, well, did you have any evidence that they plastered it over? No. Um, I mean, it's easier to just make a, you know, limestone tablet and practice there yeah. and throw that away and make another one, right, and in a room. Because what we find is that graffiti is often associated with, again, with these peri-abandonment activities. And in the palace, the, a, the, the North Palace complex, we found all kinds of graffiti in the walls there too. 
So hmm. just difference of opinion. You know, they might be right. I might be wrong. Um, <laughs> I think it's, uh, it's, again, you know, either people who lived in there, you know, we all doodle. But that it was a scribal room per se. <laughs> you can't fit a lot of people in that room. Yeah. And you'll run out of wall space quickly. Huh. Yeah. And it's dark. Yeah. So if you have torches, you're going to suffocate <laughs> with all the, you know, with all the, what, um, what's the emission? Um, carbon monoxide. Yeah. yeah. You're going to suck up that energy. And so it doesn't, you know, it doesn't make practical sense. So, so that's my take on it. Here you can see the excavations of structure A9 of panels 3 and 4. Currently, the originals of panel 3 and 4 are located in the visitor center. This is panel 3 and its photo and drawing by Christoph Helmke. This is panel 4, and here we have the drawing of the glyph medallions by Simon Martin after Christoph Helmke. I'll fetch in the tomb, but uh, so anyway, this is structure A9. And um, in the 19, at the turn of the century, the 1910, 1920s, this right, medical doctor named Thomas Gann, who got interested in archaeology, decided to excavate at the summit. And he finds the remains of a, a female individual and um, in a bunch of uh, broken pots. And uh, he, you know, that was all he did. In the 1990s, a team from UCLA uh, excavated the southern flank of the structure. That's, you see where the trees are? So facing the playing alley. Uh, they excavated there, but they, you know, they found some of the walls, the terraces. We call these the terraces of the building, mm -hmm. going up. There are about three terraces. And um, people have been coming to Shenantanich to excavate since the late 1900s so more than a hundred years of people excavating here i assume my, my I, this is my second project here my first project was 2000 to 2004 and then i came back in 2015 and have been here since 2015. so usually when we excavate a site we always dig at the base of these monuments because the maya often placed offerings there and, uh, but I thought surely one, you know, some other archeologist would have done that. I had this graduate student from Northern Arizona and uh, she had never done any excavations in her life. Um, she wanted to do archeology span for an MA. And I figured, well, this site's already been, you know, excavated. If nothing else, we can get a good sense of the architecture. So I said, Diane, you're gonna write this up for your thesis. Include what other people have done. I said, but let's go for broke. Um, I don't like to leave anything to, you know, guesswork. Mm -hmm. I said, I assume somebody dug at the base of the stela. Um, but let's put a unit there. We do, and we found this cache with about 30, no, I lie, uh, about uh, 14 eccentric flints. These are little flints that are shaped like um, scorpions, uh, centipedes, uh, half moons or crescents and all kinds of stuff. And I go, wow, that's the first week. That was like the second day of excavations. Mm -hmm. I said, Diane, your thesis is looking good. <laughs> I said, you know, I usually also dig at the base of the building because sometimes you find caches there. And I knew because that little temple over on the other side, I excavated that in 2001 and I found two offerings there. One offering of nine of those eccentrics and then below that, eight eccentrics and one JB, nine objects. So I said, dig in here. 38 artifacts Ooh. in that deposit. Now this is the fourth day. Friday, the guys have now expanded the stair. We call this the stair side. And that's the stair side outside. So we had a bunch of workers, you know, digging along. And one of the workmen said, I think I have the stair side outside. He had excavated this section. So I said, yeah, it looks, and I said, wow, but it's really well preserved. I said, let me your trowel. And I go, oh. I said, that's not plaster. <laughs> so I cleaned some more and I hit it and it's clinking. I go, holy shit, 
<laughs> um, that's French for wow. <laughs> anyway, so we start to clean up, and then we hit this, and it's like, bingo, we have a carved monument. Now, I never like to assume or impose our sense of symmetry on the Maya. You always lose. Mm -hmm. Any archaeologist that has worked will yeah. tell you when you think they're going to be symmetrical, yeah. they go, ha, ha, Maya one, archaeologist zero. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but again, you know, why not give it a shot? So I said, keep digging on this side. <laughs> now I cheated a little bit here, folks. We dug in the stair side. We get to the stair side outside. Maya one, archaeologist zero. So I said, well, don't give up, keep going. We found it was broken in, in half. This is a replica. The originals are in the visitor center. We found it lying here, face down. And, but we sometimes forget that over the last thousand years, right? Big trees have grown on top of this and the roots are pushing stuff all over the place. And then, what's your name? What? Tati. Tati? Hurricane Tati comes along and knocks down that tree. <laughs> <laughs> I like to pick on people sometimes. Um, and you know, knocks down that stuff and then moves the monuments, right? We just assume that it should be right where they left it. But there's a lot of what we call bioturbation, right? Biology or geology or whatever it's taking place. So we find the second monument all within like the first nine days of excavation. That stuff never ever happens. I have colleagues who have spent a lifetime excavating and never found a carved monument. Well, it only gets better. Uh -oh. <laughs> One day, I am the guy who's doing. I'm out here with a film camera, and I'm like the panels. You know, we figured out they're not local stone, and having worked at Caracol, doing you know all that conservation work. Right away, you know, um, Jorge Khan, who is up here with me, he's back there somewhere. Um, right away, you know, Jorge and I, we call him Tilico. We look at each other, we go, Caracol Stone. Well, I photographed the, the glyphs, and another one of my ex graduate students, now a professor at the University of Copenhagen, Christoph Helmke. Christoph and I have our little code. Whenever I find any object with hieroglyphic inscriptions. Okay. I sent him emails and the subject of the email <coughs> is eye candy. So if Christoph <laughs> sees an email from me and he says eye candy, he will stop everything and go check it out. So I put eye candy and Christoph was, up. Christoph was like, WTF. You, yeah. 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 What the hell? You know, da -da -da. this you know, is probably part of the Naranjo uh, or Caracol hieroglyphic stair. Depends on, you know, some people call it the Naranjo hieroglyphic stair, some people call it the Caracol. And um, so Christoph started to do the decipherment, and um, I think the two fastest publications I've, I've ever been involved with was the two publications, because we did the first one, and then when we found the second one, and then Simon Martin, you know, all the epigraphers were here like within days. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Simon was here. Uh, David Stewart was here, Nikolai was here, wow. um, and um, what's really neat about it is that it, they serve as almost like the, you know, the introduction and the conclusion of the hieroglyphic stare. <coughs> it starts off with telling us about the death of Lady Batsek, the mother of Lord Khan II, who commissions the hieroglyphic stare. Yeah. And then it continues and it talks about this ruler um, from the site of um, uh, Zibanche, who was the head of the Khan dynasty, right? the state dynasty. Kanul? What? Kanul dynasty? Yeah, the, yes. Yeah. And, um, and then that, you know, he plays ball game, ball game, and then, you know, what happens after that, right? He's sacrificed. And, um, and then it, it gives us, it reaffirms some of the dates that we had. For the, for the rest of the hieroglyphic story. And today we now know that the two biggest pieces are here at Kalpech of that hieroglyph, uh, sorry, at uh, Shunantinich of that hieroglyphic stair. And there's a fragment that was found at Ukanal, 
by, it could have been Ian Graham that um, identified that fragment at Ucanal, where Christina Halperin, another student who did her master's with me in the caves, um, she's been working up at, uh, at Ucanal. And you know, some people questioned about, well, would they have been you know, able to move these large monuments? And the answer is darn right they could. Yeah. When you look at Stonehenge, right, and the upper Paleolithic, they were moving those large rocks. At Kalakmul, Stila 9. It's a slate stila that's uh, shoot uh, about 10 or more feet high. Massive slate monument. There's no slate uh, around Kalakmul. Mm -hmm. It's really gifted by Karakol. Right. Yeah. And uh, Kalakmul is about 60 kilometers from here. So we know that they can move these kinds of monuments over great distances. In this case, they could have brought it down the Mopan River. And if these are the two biggest ones, why did they, you know, they end up here? Well, what I've argued is that our queen there may have been an ally. No question, this site would have been an ally of Naranjo participates in that battle. And this is their share of the booty. And might as well give them the heaviest pieces because if you have to go 14 more kilometers with them, <laughs> just leave them here. Yeah. And that could also explain why they're here adorning her funeral yeah. temple. Yeah. So, you yeah. remember you were joking about do you want the, want the truth or yeah. the... <laughs> um, but that's how we you know, sort of tried to piece this, this story together. Now, of course, I told my grad students at the end, I said, Diane, you better give up. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you never get any better. Because it's <laughs> never, ever, ever going to get any better. I mean, nobody yeah. who's never worked in the Maya area on their first month yeah. of excavation, right, caches. So did she go on? So she's doing her PhD at uh, UNC, North Carolina, um, but in heritage management. So she probably realized that, yeah, it was never going to get any better than that. And did they find any, uh, did Vilma find anything at Naranjo? Well, yeah, they, well, you know, they, they looted most of the fragments from Naranjo. Oh. Oh, yeah. I think there might be just a couple of fragments left. Hmm. Yeah, they just got looted. I think Ian Graham records them the last time there in the 70s. Oh, I have it in, my, in the paper that Christopher and I wrote. Yeah. And then... You know, the site was just alluded to hell, which is sad, but yeah. So if you want to learn more about the panels and the hieroglyphic stair, you need to come and join the IMS on the 1st of October, where there's going to be a symposium that's going to be discussing the Naranjo or the Caracol hieroglyphic stair in detail with all the important specialists who know everything about the Can Dynasty. Announcing the Institute of Maya Studies one day symposium and round table on Saturday, October 1st. It's a part of this year's Maya at the Playa event. The title, the Caracol Naranjo's Hieroglyphic Stairway, featuring Dr. Jaime Awe, representing Zanantanich, Diane and Arlen Chase, representing Caracol, Dr. Vilma Fialco, representing Naranjo, and Christoph Helmke, with his work with hieroglyphics. And for all you Maya enthusiasts and Facebookers, isn't it time you join the Institute of Maya Studies? We're celebrating our 50th anniversary of providing public education about the Maya. For just $25, you can get a one-year membership that includes a subscription to the popular IMS Explorer newsletter. We're a 5013 nonprofit organization, and you can donate on our website using PayPal. Or mail a check out to the Institute of Maya Studies at the address you see on the screen. On my recent trip to Belize, 
Jaime Awe was gracious enough to meet with me, help promote the IMS Symposium on October 1st, and allow me to videotape these excavations. Thanks for tuning in, and remember to join the IMS. Thank you.